Visit abbaeservices.com for fast medical transcription service. This podcast episode is brought to you by AB Music Creative. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Lourdes Capolong. I actually started teaching when I was 16 years old. Teaching voice. Piano. Piano. Sa mga kapitbahay namin. Okay, don't be, what, what, the, uh, let's backtrack. So this mm. is interesting. When did you learn to play the piano? Oh, backtrack pa tayo ng konti. Oh, sige. Kasi nung 8 years old ako, sinali ako ng nanay ko sa choir. Eh, ang requirement sa choir, sa UP Cherubim and Seraphim, um, kailangan lahat kami magpiano. Kasi para daw, we can read notes Para you know, solve it. Yeah, so we can like yeah. uh, teach ourselves and practice. Apparently, ako lang pala yung nagpa-practice at nagtuturo ng sarili ko. And I learned like much later in life that my uh, mga kasama ko sa choir, mga sumusunod lang pala sila. But mo, all of us really took piano lessons. Kaya, you know, the entrepreneurial me, ay, wala akong pera. Ay, mag- gusto mo, turuan mo yung kapitbahay. O oh, sige! <laughs> diba? So you taught piano muna, hindi? Yeah, piano first. Kasi it's... Wait, uh, you learn piano at eight? Eight, uh, and then, eight singing also sa choir. Tapos, did you teach piano or did you teach voice? No, I taught piano first. So, yung mga hanon, mga ganun. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Pero maliliit pa yung mga bata, mga teaching little fingers how to play lang yun. Okay, okay. <laughs> yung John Thompson, yun lang. How old were you? I I started when I was 16 to teach. Pero doing recordings sa choir, uh, because I was in the choir, siguro mga 12. Pero konti lang yun nung mga 12 years old. Did you know at at an age of 12 that this is what you wanted to do? No, not at all. So what did you want to be? Actually, I wanted to be a fashion designer. <laughs> and I hope people are listening, <laughs> ha, because sometimes yung naiisip mo is iba pala sa calling mo, eh, di ba? Oo. May mga ganun. Eh. Oo, kasi a lot of people ask me that question. Parang, pero sabi ko, kaya ako naging musiko kasi dun I apparently excelled in it or I found myself in a community that does music. Tapos pag umalis ako doon, parang feeling ko fish out of water ako. Diba? Oh. Mm-mm, kasi um, I, the children's choir rehearsed at the UP College of Music. So, syempre, oh, palagi na ako sa College of Music. Pag nag-upcut ako, mag-broadcast communication ako. Di, so, na College of sa, Music ka? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, kilala mo si, ano, si, si Miss Vina Gonzalez. Yes. Okay. Oh. Si Tita Vina is the mom of Pancho na kasama kong nagpaanak sa mga aso. Uh, oh, really? Oh, oh. Si Pancho is the manager of Bamboo. Mm, Bag- I see. So si Tita oh. Vina ang... And Vina is uh, is a former, one of the original, di ba B? We were both in the Philippine Madrigal Singers. So she Yon. was one of the original. Yes. So, so kami, magkakakilala na kaming, kaming lahat. So, hi Tita Vina. She likes, she likes watching the podcast. Hi! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Mm, retired. Oh, Ngayon pa, pa Hong Kong, Hong Kong na lang. Ay, sama ako. Yun. So anyway, <laughs> um, I digress. So you did this. Mm. So fish out of water pag, pag wala ka sa community of musicians. Mm. Kaya mo inabandon yung fashion designer dream mo? Ah, uh, It's funny. I... S- I never I didn't really abandon it because modista ako ngayon. I mean, I still sew. Kasi iba pala yung modista sa fashion designer as in the same way that an arranger is different from an orchestrator and a songwriter. Magkaiba. Iba kasi magkaiba. Mm. It's still in the same industry. Pero I there was a time here, ha? I was sewing uh nakikiusap kasi sila. I really didn't but it was like a way to save money and for me to occupy myself. <laughs> so wait, wait. So modista ka. So anong anong brand ng pananahi ang gin? Anong makina mo? I actually, it's funny. It's a fifty dollar uh, Sears ano na binigay lang sa akin. But the, the pindot o the pedal? The hindi, the electric na yun nandito. Na. Pero when I was sixteen years old, I had two sewing machines sa bahay namin sa Pilipinas. Pero I just made clothes for myself and my friends. Alam mo na i-inspire ako sa... Oh, when you said entrepreneurship, you were not kidding. Talagang drilled down six level pababa yung pagiging entrepreneur mo, no? Oo nga, pero now that you brought it up, I never really thought of it that way. Did you ever hold a day job? No. Kasi I would consider my day job was teaching at Ryan Kayabyab Music Studio. Kasi nandun ako ng 9 a.m. Sa Harrison to 6. Plaza. Uh, hindi, that was... Uh, ano to? Anong pangalan nun, B, sa Makati? 
San Var Plaza. San Var, okay, San Var okay. Plaza in Makati. Okay. So, doon ako pumapasok, nakatira kami sa Feel Invest 1 sa Batasan. Oh my God. <laughs> so, nagla-love bus kami ng, ng aking mga kasamang nagtuturo, nagkakasabay kami. So, sino, yun sino, yung sino kasama mo sa, sa Ryan Caviar? Sino Edward? Oh, si Edward, uh-huh. Ganadosin, kasama ko rin sa Three of a Kind. Yeah. Si Ed, mga asawa ko, nandun. I think we were married already by that time, no? Yeah. yeah. Si, um, so, si Ed, Ed, you sing also? Yeah, nag-LA Master Coral yan. Dito. So do you, okay, so this is interesting. Kasi nung, nung kami ni Geneva, we were both artists, mm-hmm. right? We thought it was going to work. It okay. did not work between uh, us as, uh, okay. as musicians and artists. Mm-hmm. Kung baga magkaiba yung opinion mm-hmm. namin. Eh. Kaya sa bahay, we didn't really talk about our craft. Uh-huh. Kayo yung dalawa ni Ed, your husband. How did it work for both of you? Did you compliment each other? Th- or were you critics of each other? I think both. Kasi he was a master orchestrator. He did George Canseco's movies, yung scoring. Yeah. Tapos minsan pag magpapademo si Uncle George, ako yung kakanta. Then we both worked with Ryan Kaya Biab. We did live na backup. Pero nung nagkaroon, yung nag-divert na yung ano ko, kasi nga like... Yung genre. Oo, oh. oh, na, like um, uh, nag-frontliner kami. Di ba yung three of a kind? Kasi yeah. we always worked in the background. Tapos sabi ko, mag-frontliner naman tayo para makaslaks naman yung kita natin or something. Tumaas-taas doon. No? Kasi we were so busy naman at that time. Laman ako ng recording studio. Three times a week nasa recording studio ako noon while teaching at Ryan's uh, studio. Grabe, no? But anyway, I think nung, uh, nung nagkaroon ng diversion na yon yung nag-iba, he, he was still very supportive. Biro mo, during that time, he, uh, later na, matagal, we've been married 30, ilan na nga ba? 30 30, ano, 35? 30-something That deserves years. a round of applause. 35, 34. Ilan? 34. 34. See, I have to ask him. Wala na akong natatanda. <laughs> but but uh, when we were... Um, he allowed me to travel to the US with my group three of a kind. So we were magko-concert kami dito. Sasama kami kay, kay Vina, magbabackup, kay, kay Pops. You know, so backup. it was you, si Edward. Ako. Who was the other one? Jello Francisco. Jello, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, so yung ginawa namin yun, um, uwi ako ng Pilipinas. No? So pero ano, there was a time talaga magkaiba ng ginagawa namin sa music because he was with the San Miguel Performing Arts. Uh, ano nga ang pangalan niyo ulit? San Miguel Master Coral, ano ba ito? Wala ko matandaan. San Miguel Master Coral for seven years and doing orchestration and nagtuturo ng, what, three choirs. no? So, malakas ang choir, uh, pagtuturo ng choir sa Pilipinas, almost every corner has a wow. choir and almost everyone came from the Philippine Madrigal Singers or trained by a Philippine, uh, from the uh, roster of the Philippine Madrigal Singers where we came, we both came from. You know, you know why you, this conversation is very inspiring? Um, nung panahon natin, Mm. It was frowned upon pag pag gusto mo maging musiko eh. Mm. 'Di ba? Walang pera diyan. Di ito lang ngayon. Now mm. with the advent of streaming, mm. you have you have young millionaires because mm-hmm. bedroom musicians sila mm-hmm. and they're making millions of pesos mm-hmm. or hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. right? Pero nung panahon natin, it wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. But you and Ed, you're both uh musiko. Mm. 'Di ba? You're both you're you're, you're both there. Pinasok ka ng parents mo sa choir at a young age of eight. When they realized na ito talaga ang direction na pupuntahan mo, was there any hold, you know, pushback or... No, there you know. wasn't. I was very lucky. My father kasi, um, taga-tundo yan na naging U- na UP, la, Juan Luna, okay. tapos naging UP professor, tapos naging undersecretary of ministry, the Ministry of Natural Resources, and by the time that he died, he was already a senior director in World Wildlife Fund in Washington, D.C. Kasi siya, pinalaki siya, yung tatay niya, makata. Oh. So, so sanay sila sa hirap and he kind of told me na, you know, if somebody wants to be an artist, they're going to swallow everything that comes with it. Say it again, please. Um, if anyone wants to be an artist, they're going to swallow whatever comes with it. Now, elaborate. Ako naiintindihan ko yun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pero I want you to elaborate it with everybody else because I think lahat tayo rito, pero lang kay Ives because si Ives hindi artist. <laughs> pero we had to swallow everything. Baka may pagka, ano ka. Hi Ives. <laughs> we had to swallow ev- we had to really swallow everything. Yeah. Palugi yan eh sa umpisa eh. Oo. Tsaka, And then ang daming rejection yan eh. Kasi ito rin sinabi ng tatay ko. Nasabi ng tatay niya. Pag, na, pag nagtanim ka ng kamoting kahoy hindi ka mamamatay. 
Totoo. Our needs are basically not that difficult to, you know, if, kaya na, na I think nasanay ako noon nung bata pa ako, ah, wala akong pera, o sige, hindi ko nalang bibilin yan. Madali lang yun. Tapos, ay, may pera ako. O saan yung gusto kumain? Yung, it was like that with my father. And I think, uh, ganun din siya eh. 